In this video, we're going to look at how to fix a dripping Moen single handle bathroom faucet. Dripping faucets can be really annoying. Remember the day when you could fix those with just a 10 cent rubber washer and a screwdriver? Well, that's not the case anymore. Now you need, in this case, a $16 cartridge. It still isn't a real difficult job, but let's take a look at how to fix that faucet. The tools are pretty basic. I have some silicone grease here. You'll see what we use that for in a minute. Here's the actual cartridge. I'll probably need a needle nose pliers, a couple of screwdrivers, and these are some Allen wrenches. And that's about it. Underneath the faucet, you'll probably find shut off valves, one for hot, one for cold. Make sure those are shut off. If you don't have that, you may have to shut off all the water to the house. On the Moen faucet, underneath, there's this little decorative label. That will have to come off. I might be able to get it with my fingers. There we go. So that comes right off. And by the way, there's something I should mention right away. That drain. Let's make sure that's closed in case I drop something down there. You also might consider putting a towel or a little washcloth or something so nothing goes down the drain. So we'll unscrew that little Allen screw in there. I'm going to lay out these pieces in the order that I remove them. That way it'll be easier when I'm reassembling the whole thing. The next thing you see is a Phillips screw, so we're going to have to remove that. And once the screw is out, this piece comes off by tipping it and then pulling it from the back because there is that, that little pin, I don't know if you can see that, a little tab, and the tab has to fit under from the back. So make sure that you lean it forward and then take it off. And the next thing you'll see there is this decorative ring. So we'll take that off. Remember to keep everything in order. Now the next thing you'll see is this piece and that will unscrew. It's a little slippery because it's kind of greasy in here. So I'm going to get something uh, to give me a better grip, piece of rubber or something to help me unscrew that. There we go. I just started it with a paper towel and that helped. That'll go over here as well. Now in this particular unit, you'll see another decorative piece. So we'll take that off. Now this is going to come off with a clip. There's a clip right in the back. I don't know if you can see that. So we're going to have to pull that clip out. Okay, I ended up just grabbing it with my needle nose pliers. And that clip will come right out. That over here. Now this plastic piece comes out. Be careful, there is a washer under there. You want to be aware of that so it doesn't get stuck. So we'll take that. Then I've got to get that little washer. I might need my pliers again for that. There it is. Be real careful with that. You do not want to lose that. Keep everything in order. Now we're ready to pull out the old cartridge. Now if that is really stuck in there, this new cartridge, see how it has that little thing on top, that piece of plastic? This piece of plastic is designed to help you break this free. So you can snap that on and work it back and forth if that thing is stubborn. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it too much. But you could just put it in there and then take a pliers and just work it back and forth and that'll help break up any debris, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to pull this straight out. Once I have that out, we can see the problem. Right there, you can see that ring is kind of broken off. See that bottom ring there? Now, I got to be careful because that means there's probably a piece of rubber that I have to go after before I put the new one in. So as we shine a light in there, you can see it's really clean now. This is what I got out of there. And by the way, I used this long tweezers tool in order to pick all of those old rubber pieces out of there. And I also curled up a paper towel and I got a little bit of mineral deposits and debris. So now it's nice and clean in there. 
You have to make sure that this is really clean because if you get debris in there, the faucet's going to continue to leak. Now would be a good time to check and make sure you have the right cartridge. I was ready to put this in and I realized I had the wrong part. They looked exactly the same, except you see this hole right here? On the previous one, that hole was down here. It would have fit, but it wouldn't have worked. So you might make sure the hardware store is open before you tackle this project. Here's where the grease comes into play. Now this is already pre-greased, but when I'm pushing this back in, I want to make sure this doesn't catch on any burrs, on any mineral deposits that might be in there. So I'm going to make sure that I put some of this silicone grease all over these rubber pieces. I'm just squeeze some of that out. We're going to spread it around. Make sure everything is lubricated really well. Get some up here as well. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take this and slide it in and just make sure that that's pushed all the way down. Now I want to make sure that this pin goes over. Remember it has these two kind of uh, flanges or wings. That's going to have to go alongside either of those once this piece is in place. So we want to make sure those are going up and down. I've been calling it a pin, but of course it's a clip. Let me show you what it looks like with that piece removed. This is going to have to go through that white piece I just took off, alongside either of those tabs, and then it's going to have to go through just like that. So if those tabs are not perfectly aligned perpendicular up and down, you're going to have trouble getting that through. And I'll need my pliers to get that out. But I'll take that out, put the white piece back, and you'll see how that comes together. Okay, so that goes on like that. And now this clip goes through. And I might have to wiggle it just a little bit. There it goes. So it went all the way through, so I know that that whole thing is in proper place. Now, let's pray that that is in the right direction. Otherwise, I'll have to turn it 180 degrees if the hot and cold are not going the right direction. So we pop that piece on. And this one now has to screw in. And I will go clockwise. And this is the one that we have to make sure is really tight. That was the one that was slipping on me before. Okay, that seems tight. Then we'll put this piece on. There we go. And now, remember this piece is the one that has to has a little tab. So we have to hook it from the back. And then make sure that that rests. There we go. And that's what's going to operate this whole thing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure before I put everything back, that this works right for hot and cold. When I turn this way, it should get hot. When I turn that way, it should get cold. So I pull that up, turn it this way, it should get warm. Yes, it does. Turn it that way, it should get cold. Yes, it does. So we are in a good place. I can finish putting this together. All right, let's make sure I'm getting this all together, right? Does that go down or up? That goes up that way. There we go. And we got to clip this from behind, remember? It's got that little lever. We got to make sure that that all fits right. And now we're going to get our screw. Put that in there. Okay, that's leaking, so something isn't tight, so I'm going to have to make a few adjustments. Okay, I think it was just not laying on there properly. I unscrewed it, screwed it back in. I'm getting my hot over here, getting my cold over here, and it shuts off completely. So now I can go ahead 
and put this back on. I should have had the water shut off because this is going to turn on now. And I put my emblem back on. And there we go. Mowing. And that job is now complete. Look at that. Hot water. Cold water. And no more drips. That's all there is to it. Not a very complicated job. All told, it cost me about $24, $25. The new piece that I exchanged was a little more expensive. It was about 20 bucks. Another $4 or so for the grease and maybe 15 minutes of my time, not counting running back to the hardware store. But it's a lot cheaper than hiring a plumber. I'm not a plumber. I'm not even a handyman. I'm just a guy that likes to figure out how things work. And if I can do this, trust me, anybody can do this. Now that you know the right tools and how to go through step by step. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. As always, I encourage you to subscribe by clicking my face down there in the corner. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell way up there so you know when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. Maybe it's up there. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Mark, and this is the Average Me Channel.